Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a wooden survival house in Minecraft. First of all, the house comes in two different material sets. Here we have the spruce and birch and also birch and oak. The house has an extensive garden, numerous ways to get in and out and around the house. Inside, we have enough room for an extensive brewing area or two, an enchantment library, a utility room, a redstone room, we have storage, more storage, and a crafting area. Need I say more? I really hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, and you're new around here, please do remember to click that subscription button and click that little bell next to the subscription button as that will ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And without any further ado, let's get started. So just before we start building everybody, here are all of the materials that we are going to be using throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these and enough of those materials as well. The amount of space required to make the build is a 29 by 34 block area on the ground. Please do feel free to make this grid in your world if you do feel as though it might help you out. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to. Do make sure that you got all that stuff. Make sure you got enough room to make it. Make sure you're ready. And once you are, we can begin. Step one, my wooden survival house building friends, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid. That is of course if you've made the grid. If not, please bear with us one moment. From the corner, I want you to count right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then inwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the starting position. We're going to begin by placing a spruce plank on the ground. Place two upside down spruce stairs left of it. One, two. Place a spruce wood plank on the end. And now, going backwards, I want you to place three spruce planks. One, two, three. I want you to go up one. And then backwards by three. One, two, three. I then want you to go up one, backwards by three, one, two, three, up one, and backwards by only two, one, two, like this. We're then going to extend the second block across to the left by five, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to join it down to the ground. In addition to joining it down to the ground, we're going to extend the block forwards by two, one, two, and then we're going to extend it over to the right, and we'll join upwards like this. So that's the sort of shape that we're looking for. We'll do more with that a little bit later on. It's important that you remember where we started, as the block that we extended down to the ground now has to be extended backwards by three blocks. One, two, three. Extend upwards by two. One, two. Extend left one. Up one. Left two. Down one. Left one. Down two. That will give you this shape. We then want to extend left two. Down one. Left two. Down one. Left one. We're then just going to join down to the ground like this. So all in all, we should have a shape which should look like this. We then want to extend the block that just hit the ground across the back of the build. We're going to extend it across by nine blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're then going to extend the block towards us and then up by two. One, two. We're then going to extend left by ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Join down to the ground. Take the block that hit the ground and extend inwards one. And then extend this block to the left by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I then want you to extend the ninth block up one. And then we're going to extend it left one, up one, 
left two. Up one, left two. Up two, left one. Up one, left two. Go down one, left one, down by two. And then we want to go left by three. One, two, three. But we're going to join this block here down to the ground, like so. We're then going to take the block that hits the ground and we're just going to extend it forwards just by two. But it's important to remember the block that we extended down to the ground here, right? We're going to extend it to the left and we're going to extend it left inwards in the build by five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. We're then going to extend towards us by two. One, two. And then down one, forwards three, one, two, three, down one, forwards by three, down one, and then forwards by three. What we can then do is extend over to the left using two upside down spruce stairs, one, two, and stick a spruce plank on the end. Now the end result should be I'll, I'll, I'll give you this, a weird shape, but it should be symmetrical. The left and right side should be the same. And I think that we've managed to accomplish this. So, now that we have done this, ladies and gentlemen, what we're now going to do is picking up where we last started, alright? We're going to place two sideways birchwood stairs extending inwards to the build. Stick a spruce wood plank on the end. Extend up by one. Stick another row of spruce wood planks behind this row. Then, I want you to take this row of spruce planks and I want you to place another row moving inwards. Extend up by two. One, two. Go left by ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Join it down to the ground. I want you to take the bottom two blocks here and I want you to extend them both left and then forwards and then we're going to place two sideways birchwood stairs like so. What we are now going to do is we are going to extend up the two side parts of the entrance here so that we can create a bit of the frame of the house. So we're going to take this corner of spruce planks, the highest one, it's the row of 10 that we placed earlier, and we want to extend it backwards by two. One, two. And then up by one. Back two. One, two. Up one. Back two. Up one. Back two. Up one. And then just extend back by, I would say, about three. One, two, three. And then we're actually going to leave it like that. And you'll see why later on. I want you to replicate this on the opposite side of the entranceway, which is here. So we're simply going to take this side and we are going to copy it. You can quite easily copy it just by positioning yourself in such a way that you can see the opposite side. So that's exactly what I have done myself. Now that we have done that, we are going to do some work on the entrance. So as I mentioned, the entrance is a whole different part of the build. Everywhere else is quite simple, but the entrance is quite interesting. So I want you to begin by taking this big empty open space and I want you to place two upside down spruce wood stairs coming inwards from both sides of the bottom of the entrance. I want you to stick vertical rows of spruce wood planks left and right of the spruce wood stairs. I want you to add a row of spruce wood planks that goes all the way around the empty space that is inside of the big hole that we had there. 
And now that we have a shape that looks like a spider's face, we are going to take these two spruce wood planks on the left of this double wide hole, the two spruce wood planks on the right, and the spruce wood plank above, and we're going to extend them towards us. This will allow us to place birch wood planks in the corners, birch wood slabs next to the planks, birch wood slabs just on top, and then you'll find that if you extend all of the birch blocks towards you using slabs and join them together at the top, you have quite a pleasing entrance. You can fill the two holes in, left and right, using some glass pane. I like using white glass pane because it really stands out against the spruce, because it's quite dark. In addition to this, we're going to add a few rows, or let's say a couple of rows, of birchwood planks moving backwards from the top of the frame, mo frame moving inwards like this, above the entranceway. You want to find the middle of this area. It's exactly where the apex of the tiny little roof is here. You want to locate the second row of birch planks, and you want to place a door. You want to then replicate the doorway that we have just down below us, which means placing two spruce planks left and right of the door. It then means placing a spruce plank above the door. And then we're going to place two rows of planks, moving backwards from each of the planks like this. We are then going to create window areas. We'll first of all extend the planks outwards, the rows of two outwards, and then we'll join the bottoms together to the roof area using upside down spruce wood stairs. We're then going to place white stained glass pane on top of the stairs like this, and this is the effect that we will have. As you might imagine, all we have to do now is just cover in any gaps that we might have just underneath this particular portion. I would opt to use some birch wood, and this is what we'll have. So, I'm going to place a layer of birch slabs across the top of the spruce plank area like this. The spruce slabs are then going to extend across left and right the frame of the house. I'm going to extend the birch wood slabs inwards and upwards. These are the slabs that overhang the side of the house. I'm going to repeat this pattern until we eventually reach what I would refer to as the top two middle blocks. So for instance, we ended up placing a row of four, if you guys remember earlier. I'm going to leave it just in this position here where we place the two middle, uh, the two middle birch plank blocks, because now we'll start extending downwards. So eventually we will take this plank and we'll extend like back, down, back, down, back, down. You guys get the idea, but we're going to add more of a frame to the house before that. We're only focusing on this middle part. But that means that we can do this on this side as well. We have quite a few roofs in this particular build, ladies and gentlemen. They all have to be connected together, but they're all rather easy, as they are all made out of the same thing, which is the birchwood slabs, pretty much. But I'll, I'll mirror what we have on the opposite side, and you'll find that the this middle roof will connect to the back. So this is sort of what we want to have right now, and it's, it's not a bad looking roof, is it? It's not bad at all. Well, the roof wants to extend across into this area here, the balcony area. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to place a birch wood plank in this position here and in this position here. Or maybe we could even widen it. It could be maybe like here and here. So that means it just sits outside of the entrance. Now, the reason that we have these planks is so that we can place some glass pane in between them, so that we, we get a really cool balcony effect. And then, we can extend the birchwood slabs inwards. Now, it's kind of up to you how far you want to extend the birchwood slabs inwards towards the build. So, you, you can, like, just this part here, like, you can kind of, like, extend the birchwood slabs across the top of the windows like this and then have them like just sit on the sides of the frame 
Like these birch wood, uh, these birch wood planks here, like you could have them like join to the balcony area or you can kind of just leave them. I'd probably have them come about maybe like this. Maybe, maybe I will have them join to the back of the balcony and then that way you can kind of like walk around a bit. And then I'm also going to just place these ones here too. I'm going to have the birchwood slabs sit around the side like this. So it is a bit of a limited area. It is just kind of like a cool part of the house though. So these obviously want to overhang the, uh, these want to overhang like this. And then we can extend them inwards and upwards like so. So that actually looks pretty cool, right? It's a really nice feature of the house. What else are we going to do? Well, we're going to connect the rest of the roof together up here. So we're just going to join this little mini roof that we've made here using slabs and planks. We'll join it to the main part of the roof. You're, the rules with this roof is that you only have to use slabs for half of the roof. Like every other part of the roof, you can use birchwood planks. It's actually easier to use birchwood planks than it is to use two different sets of slabs. So you can preemptively fill in uh, all of the like birchwood plank parts, and then you can just fill in the middle parts with slabs, as I've just done there. And you'll end up with like quite a nice looking roof, and it'll just be a bit easier to fill in in the meantime. Now that we have done that as well, ladies and gentlemen, we probably should extend the spruce frame that we have on the sides of the build. We're going to extend the spruce frame backwards, like this. So we're just going to extend it back, and you'll find that it actually does connect like this to the back of the build. You can see the front middle part connects to the back middle part. So, on the back of the build here, we're going to extend the birchwood slab parts of the roof that we made earlier, and we're going to join them downwards. There should be a natural connection point here on the back part of the build, and it will just join down to the back middle part. So, it's actually really... It is designed quite well like that, so you can see that the roof is actually nice and even. It extends up and down, and it just sits up above this little part of the roof here. So what we can then do, of course, is we can just extend the planks left and right just to join all together. And then all we have to do is fill in the spruce plank parts uh, that we kind of like created, you know how we kind of like join the front and the back using some spruce planks Well, we can fill those parts in that'll create some interior walls, which is fantastic Because it, it is really really helpful or at least for me when designing the insides of builds I love it when there's already naturally built-in walls Because it makes it so much easier to divide it into rooms and then you can kind of like give each room a purpose I love that so much better. It gives a build a bit of structure so that's the roof um, we can just fill in this back part here and then that allows you to add windows and such later on if you so choose we are going to just fill this side of the wall in so we're going to fill the the walls in on the left and right side of the build like this so like here like this and we'll do the other side too so here oh it might be as well that you have to every so often you may have to destroy a birch wood slab to actually slot in the uh, spruce block, but that's perfectly fine. So just every so often, more so these ones towards the back. There we go. So now you can see we'll be able to create some interior walls. And we're going to do this on the opposite side too, of course. So on this opposite side here, we're just going to place all of these spruce planks like this. And we'll just build up these walls. And then that allows us to work on the rest of the build. Because this is really, honestly, this is the more complicated part of the build. Once these walls have been built up as they will, uh, as they will be, we will be able to do the two little uh, parts of the house that like kind of hang off. So now that that middle part of the house is done, you can see that we can now work on the frames here. So, if we come towards the left side of the build, which is, well, here, of course, you guys know where the left side of the build is, it's, it's on the left, uh, we're going to fill in this 
uh, this little area here. So we made a curve. We're going to add another row of birch wood planks or spruce wood planks on top of this curve. We're going to fill in this space underneath where these stairs will be. We're going to create an entrance, which is just going to be on the left here. A birch wood entrance is going to be there. We're going to leave enough room for a little window. We're going to also uh, fill this little area and we're going to give it a roof. This is going to be birchwood slabs extended across the top of what we've just made. And the birchwood slabs are going to extend up and back. So they're actually going to come up and back until they are level with the spruce wood planks that we have here. And then we're going to extend the birchwood slabs downwards until they are kind of equal with what we just made on the front. We can then place a spruce wood plank here and then we can fill in this area using spruce wood planks as well. So we can just kind of fill all of this in like this, here, 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 and we're not going to, I don't think that we're going to fill that part in because we're going to use birch wood planks just as this little roof and place some slabs on top. That looks pretty good, right? So we filled a decent portion of this in. And we're now going to take this two block high uh, spruce wood plank area and we're going to extend this over to the right. And we want both of them extended over. To give you an idea, we should probably add in a row of birchwood planks to sit underneath the spruce and then extend the birchwood planks forwards by probably about two rows or so. And now we can place a double entrance here in this position. So I'm going to use birch doors for this. Gap of one, destroy. Gap of two, destroy. So that way we have two little windows or you could have perhaps like one big window in the middle kind of depends what you sort of want to have but I mean you could go either way place a little bit of glass sat around the spruce wood planks like so I also want to emulate the spruce wood area that we have here just on the left on this walkway we want to emulate this on the right so just sat the opposite side here we're going to have the um, spruce wood planks like this and the spruce wood planks are actually going to just sit parallel. So that means we have to place one there and there. They're just going to sit parallel like this. We want the ends of the spruce wood planks to be connected together using some birch wood stairs like so. And then some birch wood planks like this behind the stairs. So just like that here and here. So we want to have something which should look exactly like this. We're going to place a little bit of white stained glass pane around the where you would walk up, just like so. And now, just to finish off this part, we pretty much just have to add a bit of a roof here. So to add the roof, we're pretty much just going to place some spruce wood planks like this, just making this a double high wall. And then we're just going to, very similar to what we did just down below, we're going to place a row of birchwood slabs that starts here. It's just going to sit above the doorway and the, uh, and the window. And we're just going to kind of like figure out where the roof wants to be. So it'll probably apex here where we have the highest spruce plank. And then the roof will slowly but surely come down. Now we might have to... Oh, that's, that's right, silly me. So uh, the roof's actually split into two parts. So this part has its own little roof like this. I do apologize. So you can see that the roof is nice and separate. So down here on the back as well, we're going to have a row of birchwood slabs that just sits up above the two row high of spruce wood planks. And then it's going to extend up and inwards until eventually it will reach a very natural end here, just on the back portion of the house that we were building on. So there we go. I completely forgot that it, as I did mention, there's quite a few roofs when it comes to this build. They don't actually all connect together that much, I suppose. I, uh, I kind of thought that they did, to be honest with you, but they all kind of work independently from each other. 
and I think that they do actually look quite good as a result of it. So like that connects or that just sits next to it, it kind of creates a little bit of intrigue and depth. It looks kind of interesting how it just sort of locks just outside of it. We can extend this spruce wood plank here across to join to the middle part of the house. And then we can extend all of the planks across. I guess that these ones do connect together, right? And we can extend all the planks. And then we can do the slabs too. So the slabs will be here. And of course, on the back here. And naturally here too. So we have something which should look exactly like that. Fantastic. So that's a lot to do, ladies and gentlemen. And that is that side of the house done. Once you have managed to do that to that side, we have to come over and we have to do a very similar thing. So first of all, we're just going to extend this spruce wood plank here inwards and up to join to the walkway. We're going to add another row on top of it and then we're going to fill underneath the spruce planks in like this. What we are then going to do is we are going to give this thing an entrance, so that's going to be a birch door here. Gap of one, we're going to have a window just in the little three block gap. We're going to give it a little bit of a roof, so that's birch wood slabs extended up and backwards like this until these slabs eventually are level with the spruce wood walkway. And then we want to bring the little roof down here along the side in a similar sort of way to how it just sits on the front part. We can fill in any gaps using a mixture of birchwood slabs and some uh, birch and some spruce with planks, of course, so little gaps here. And then we might as well just fill in this entire side of the build here as well using some spruce wood planks. It's also worth mentioning, I always like to say this, you can fill in and it, you can fill it all in with spruce wood planks and then add windows later. So let's say you want a little window here, then you could more so, you, you could easily add a window there or anywhere. You, you don't have to keep it literally the way that I have it, you can chop and change. So, now that we have done this part, I kind of want to do the other entrance area too. So, we're going to extend this row of two spruce wood planks across. It's then beneficial for us to place rows of birch wood planks just sat underneath like this. And then that way, yeah, that's looking good. We can then give ourselves a double door, double birch wood door. One, leave a gap of one, destroy. Gap of one, destroy. That's how I had it originally, but I'm kind of coming around to the idea of having like a double window in the middle. Just seems to sort of fit, I think. And we can place a little bit of a window there. And then we're going to mirror the spruce wood formation that we have here on the inside. We're going to mirror this. So we can have something which looks like that. Yeah, that's perfect. We want to have birchwood stairs for every step up, like so. And then we're going to place birchwood planks everywhere else along this walkway. We're going to place some white stained glass paint along the bottom of the walkway here. Probably not like that. And also along the top. In these positions, I think it looks quite nice, but I probably wouldn't add any more anywhere. Yeah, that's it. That's looking pretty good. And now we can focus on this roof a little bit. So remember that these two are kind of like split apart. So we're going to place a row of birchwood slabs across the top part of this entrance area. And these slabs are going to apex right here in this middle row of three. We can then extend it, start extending them backwards and down like this. And that's probably, it probably stops there, so we want, to, uh, we want it to be nice and even. We can then extend it across, and we can even uh, start filling in the roof, actually. We can start filling in the roof using our birchwood planks, like so. Here. And. Here. And birchwood slabs like this and also like this too that's looking good 
we can then place just a couple of rows of, of spruce wood slabs to kind of just join this part of the house together as well. And then we can start placing our birch wood slabs. So, oh, actually, we do have to just add one row of spruce planks here. And then we just have the birch wood slabs just half a row above. And we can do the frame of this first and then we can just kind of fill it in. Because as I've mentioned, I like to uh, use planks where I can. So, uh, like here. And again, the, the pattern actually does work out quite often. It's every other block. So, I, I just find it easier to do the birch planks. Um, and I think that the inside looks a little bit nicer too. Like the inside of the roof looks better if you use planks. Uh, instead of leaving like a little bit of a weird gap. So that's uh, that's exactly what we should be having, ladies and gentlemen. That is the actual house complete. It's actually looking quite impressive, isn't it? I, I do quite like that. The only thing that we're missing down here, of course, is the fact that we, uh, we don't have a door. I'm actually going to sink that half a row in. I might even do the same here just for this little entrance part too, just to create a little bit of depth. But that's looking really, really good. Um, if you want to spruce the place up a bit, you're more than welcome to, say, like, add some uh, oak leaves underneath these windows that we have here, like, uh, for the two parts that we were just working on. I'd highly also recommend, now, all of this is, like, highly optional, all of this rest, uh, rest of the part of this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, because I actually do happen to quite like... Uh, the build how it is without uh, an excess of garden but if you want you can kind of like you can add some oak leaves around the house to kind of like frame it a little bit so if you add like some oak leaves just kind of like skating or skirting around the outside of your house like this and we've went over the uh went over the little grid but oh well and uh it can come all the way forward and we can kind of like level it up with uh, where we have the two entrances and then we can maybe start bringing it inwards a bit so maybe we can bring it in and then do like maybe like one two three and then bring it in one two three and like bring it in and then maybe like we bring it in again but then like one two three like this and then like bring it in one two three something like that so we can kind of like create a corner so, again, like, don't, not necessarily what I'm doing, but, like, maybe, like, bring it in, one, two, three, bring it in, one, two, three, like, bring it in, and then here, one, two, is it one, two? I'd, I'm just trying to do the exact same thing that I did on the other side, and then bring it in, then one, two, three, so, kind of creating, like, a curve, because I feel as though that the house is, it, it's got a little bit of shape to it, right, it's a little bit curvy, and uh, I, I do quite like how that, that's turned out. And we can create a pathway that leads all the way to uh, to the entrance if we want it. We could use either birch wood planks for this, or we could use perhaps the shovel. It doesn't really matter which one you do choose to do. It's, you know, whatever you want to do. But I, I just like the idea. This house almost benefits, I think, from like a bit of a carved out area, so to speak. So we, we could have the same here. So like these stairs here could lead to the little walkway that we've made and this is all optional i do want to keep pointing that out over and over again this is optional can kind of like have this and then maybe we could have like a couple of paths so like we can have one path leading from this entrance here so maybe it can just sit around the shape of the leaves that we've placed because not only we kind of want it to connect to the big main path too so like this it's just it's just going to sit along the shape of the leaves and I don't think that we can go too far wrong if we do that so that'd be I've kind of confused myself now because we've got the row of white concrete here too but uh, look a little something like that that doesn't look too bad we can even add some more leaves along the inside here so maybe we can add some leaves like and we don't, we'll probably come to about here and here. And then maybe, I, I do like to, uh, I like to use beetroot quite often. Because it's a nice lush red colour. So we could have some beetroot like that running up the side. I mean, this is supposed to be a survival house of all. It's very buildable in survival. I, think. I know it requires a lot of materials to make, but still. So that can come to about here, can't it? Uh, without kind of like disturbing the surrounding grass. And we can have some beetroot, like this, 
just to add a bit more nature. And then that kind of like leaves these two areas exposed a bit. So, I mean, you you, you could kind of like do what you want with this area. You could uh, you could knock out. Again, I don't want anything to really connect together that much. But you could knock out like a bit of a shape kind of like this. I know it's a weird shape, but um, I actually think that it looks, uh, it looks kind of cool. It's quite interesting that the shape is abstract. So kind of like this on both sides. And then you could add kind of like a water feature to this. You could add some water buckets. Or you could perhaps add some flowers. Or something like that, you know? this or you could just uh, bone meal the area and you could, you could just leave it or you could add some hedges or something like that but I do quite like the idea of having a little bit of uh, a little bit of water perhaps and of course uh, not to mention the fact that we can add some flowers around you guys know my favorites poppies so maybe some flowers just around just to keep things nice and simple so we could place say like the flowers on the outer part just behind the uh, just behind the uh, leaf areas that might look okay but equally so you could use more farmland you could use the front of the build for uh, animals uh, for mobs you know you could use these two patches for whatever you like but I do actually like the little bits of water you could even use that for say like sugarcane or bamboo or something like that too and uh, if you wanted to you could even add say like a little bit of a little bit of birch fence just to kind of like keep these areas fenced off if you wanted to multitude of things that you could do ladies and gentlemen but i i think that we're kind of done let me clean up the area a little bit so it looks a little bit better so this is what the house will look like once it has been 100% fully completed, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I have cleaned up the front garden just a little bit. I've added what kind of looks like a bridge that keeps the left and right house and the middle of the house all separate. It encourages a little bit of exploring, and of course we have the grown beetroots and the flowers. This is hopefully what we all are looking at on our screens Give or take some flowers and pathways. <laughs> I do hope that you guys enjoyed making this build. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new. And to click the little bell next to the subscription button if you want to make sure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box and not only that ladies and gentlemen if you do want to make anything else by me please do remember to check out the card system description below the top of the comment section i'll leave all sorts of cool playlists for you in there and that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching everybody i love you all very very much i'll see you in the next one goodbye